Hello, how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to look at a 2007 Mercedes-Benz C230. This Mercedes-Benz has some communications issues and the check engine lamp is on on the bus. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to connect the scan tool and we want to go through the data so we can figure out what to do on this car. So let's go ahead and get that scan tool connected. We're going to go ahead and get a battery maintainer on this vehicle where we diagnose it. Now we have the Mercedes-Benz scan tool connected to this C230. We need to go through the data. We've run a general scan which goes in and it queries all the modules on the car and then we're going to look at the DTCs to try to figure out where our problem might be. So the first thing we can see is the electronic ignition switch has codes for under voltage and over voltage stored. The engine control module has codes that are stored for the temperature sensor, the fuel level sensor, and the fan output is implausible. Our CAN messages are that it doesn't have anything from the steering column module and the CAN torque request from the air conditioning is implausible. So these are the two CAN codes or the COM problems that we are interested in. Now the steering module, I would be thinking that that's a high speed code so we probably have some kind of a high speed system but we definitely need to still look at a wiring diagram. We're just trying to get an idea here where we're, what we're looking for, what kind of problems are we having. So when we go down to the electronic stability program we have a cruise control uh, problem and this has stored codes. Notice they're stored, they're not current. Um, the brake pressure sensor over voltage on terminal. This is a fault for the CAN communications with the control unit to the DTR module. The signal from the component from the steering angle sensor, again, the steering angle sensor is faulty and that really should be a high speed system. Those are usually on the high speed buses. Okay, so, and this is this is current. So that's a current code and that goes to the steering angle sensor. So that's starting to be a theme here that keeps coming back. Um, as we go down the airbag module, notice that we have an exclamation mark here. That means that there's no, it can't have communication. So it's not saying an F for fault. This is saying I can't talk to it. So basically the front module it can't talk to, the rear signal acquisition module, module it can't talk to. Now here we have an F. See how the difference is? So this actually has codes in it so it could talk to it. Front headlight range, the front light headlight range. Uh, again we have over voltage codes on these guys or under voltage codes. The overhead control panel it can't talk to. The upper control panel it cannot talk to. The instrument cluster it cannot talk to. The steering column module it can't talk to. And again this is a code that was set in other modules. Again the steering column module appears to be repetitious in these codes uh, making, you, we, making us think that that seems to be some type of a problem. The door control module left it cannot talk to, the door control module right it can talk to, the rear door we can't talk to, and the right rear door we can't talk to. The convenience automatic air conditioning we also cannot talk to. So we can't talk to a whole lot of these modules. Some of these, definitely the door modules and so on, those are going to be low speed. The steering angle, well that should be a high speed. So we have apparently coding from a high and low speed on this car. So what we really want to do now is we want to bring up a wiring diagram and we're going to need a scope. Without a scope right now, we're really dead in the water. And when you guys do any type of communication problems, the starting point is the scan tool, and then we need to scan the buses to make sure that the bus packages, not bitwise arbitration or communication, but just an entire package and the voltage level of the recessive bits and how these packets are made is how I'm going to diagnose these cars. So let me show you how we're going to do that. Let's get the scope and let's get a wiring diagram. We want to go ahead and connect the ground lead of the scope to the negative post of the battery. This will ensure that the voltage drop testing is correct. 
Now that we have a wiring diagram brought up on this Mercedes-Benz, we need to take a look at it. The first thing we always want to do is look at the diagnostic link connector, the DLC. How those wires come out of that connector and wire into the modules is how a scan tool is going to communicate with the car. It's going to give me an idea of where I need to put my scope leads in order to see the bus. So in this particular car, I'm more interested right now in the high speed because the scan tool gave me data concerning the steering angle sensor and the steering angle sensor is generally on the high speed bus. We still need to confirm that once we get into the wiring diagram but the first thing I always do is I look at how the scan tool talked to this vehicle. So. We're talking on CAN, so let's look at the CAN lines. Out of the DLC, that's going to be pin 6 and pin 14. Both of these wires come up into the DI, and they're green, white, and green. So those are my color traces for that, for that unit. Now these wires go into a dedicated module. In many of these cars, the engineering team does not want the scan tool connected or coupled directly to the bus itself because I can get disruptions for that. So the engineering team will give me an isolation and that module will isolate you from the actual bus systems. So the scan data that you see on the DLC connector is only that scan data. It is not a live bus. Now you can, a lot of people make mistakes because they plug this in and then they go look at it and it's got good data. The packages look like they're formed correctly. Everything looks okay. But the actual bus might have disruption and it might be a problem. So always be aware that if you go into a module, that module might isolate you. And if it isolates you, what you're seeing on the DLC is not live data. So we need to go now and we need to look for where the buses are and what buses are on this car so we have a better idea of where to connect the scope so we can see these bus systems. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Right here I have a brown and a brown red wire and this is CAN high and CAN low. And these are in the bus circuitry as well. So now I know I have a secondary CAN bus. So this CAN bus uses a green and a green white wire. The other CAN bus is going to use brown and brown red. Again, these are dual wire systems. So now we're going to come up and we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look through here and we're going to see what we've got. And now here we've got another CAN high and CAN low system and we also have green and green white. Now that would make me think that those two wires of this main CAN system are the same wires as the DLC. But I'm going to warn you. Be very careful with that because that may or may not be true. Some of the OEs use the same wire and the same coating and those are two different buses. So don't be confused here. Keep, keep on track. Here we've got a brown red and a brown. So here we've got one and this is CAN B. Now CAN B is a medium speed system. Low speed CAN is up to 10 kilobits a second. 10 kilobits to 125 kilobits a second is CAN B or medium speed. 125 kilobit seconds to a meg, that's CAN C or high speed. So that's telling me that this CAN is a two wire system and it's B. Now CAN B is fault tolerant. That means that I can lose either of the wires and I should still be able to communicate on the system. I can ground them or have them shorted to power. As long as one of the wires is active, it should still communicate. So that's sort of what that is. Can C over here, that's can high speed. High speed has no tolerance. If anything is wrong with the communications, it does not communicate. So this is a medium speed bus and this is a can high speed bus. So it gives me an idea of what we're looking for. And we can go through and we can look at the different modules on this bus as well so we can see who's on here. And we can see the instrument cluster. That was one of the ones that had no communications on this system. That is on on a medium speed bus and that would be what I would expect. And then you can have a CAN-LIN 
And Lynn is a lot of times in the steering wheel, horns, uh, turn flashers, those type of things. And that's a really low speed bus and it's much cheaper for him to produce. Um, since we're not worried about that particular bus right now, be aware that that's probably in the car or the car you're going to be working on. I could have a real low speed bus for the turn, horn, and that type of thing that are really slow. The doors, module seats, and so on are usually on a medium speed bus. And then steering angle, uh, ABS, the engine control, the transmission control, these are all high speed systems. So we got to sort of see what we had there. So we sort of had a, a combination of codes between high speed and mid speed. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find these wires and I want to go ahead and get into these two buses. So we're going to go take a look under the hood and I want to try to find something where I can get into these speed wires, the high speed system. Um, that would be like the engine control, uh, the ABS, something like that that's under that I can get to easily. Then we're going to look for these wires here and we can see that the steering column module, now this is one of the ones that had a hard fault, that also is on the medium speed bus. So we can go down and we can see this stuff uh, restraints, the front passenger seat adjustment, rear seat. So the seats are on the system as well. So maybe we can get into that bus with a seat module. And we're just looking for a quick access right now so we can make some some judgments on if these systems look like they're even breaking down or not. So step one is to get the scope, which we will get set up right now. We'll go ahead and move over to the scope. And now we're gonna connect the scope in and we're gonna look at these systems. So let's go ahead and get the connections made. So we looked under the hood, the engine control module it's underneath the air filter housing. It's going to be harder to get to. The ABS module has access. I was able to pop the cover up and get into the wire. So we're into the can high and the can low. So now let's go ahead and find the mid speed bus can B. And I want to get something under one of the seats. So let's take a look and see what we've got there. So under the driver's seat, I found the driver's seat front control module and it has the CAN B lines, the medium speed going into it. That's the brown and the brown red wire. So now we have connections into the CAN high, CAN C and CAN B mid speed. Let's go ahead and take a look at those waveforms. Let's look at the CAN buses on the scope. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna to go to dual scope. So here in the yellow and red, I can see the CAN high and in the green and blue, I see CAN low. So we wanna go ahead and shut low off on this screen and shut high off on this. Now this is CAN high and CAN high goes from 2.5 volts and it pulls up to 3.5 and it pulls down to 1.5. This is an opposing voltage scheme or a differential voltage scheme. These voltages go in opposite directions to cancel out the noise from each other. Now this can B should also have an opposing signal scheme. We have a two twisted wire. The twisted wires are so I don't radiate RF out and I don't radiate RF in. It helps both ways. The differential voltage scheme, it helps from radiating RF out of the wires into other circuits. Now this is, both of these are twisted pair and they're a differential voltage scheme. Now what I want to show you is you see how the blue line is pulled all the way down to ground and the other one has some transmission going on. But this is not what this bus should be looking like. Now the can high is, is correct. It does pull up and pull down and I always want to look at my, my bias voltage or the recessive bit voltage. On a high speed can, it should be at 2.5, that means it's fully active. If it's at 1.8, it's in what I would call an accessory mode. And if it's below 1.7, usually about 1.4 volts, that's usually a sleep mode. But this is a fully active bus and it's working. That's not a problem. My packets are being 
generated and they're good. This medium speed can has a problem. I have one of these that's pulled to ground and I have one that sort of looks like it's working right but it's not quite right. We're going to need to find what's causing this. So one of the modules on this car is pulling that signal down. So I have a CAN transceiver. The CAN transceiver is the part that is the CAN transceiver sets up the arbitration, the, the who's going to get the bus and who gets to talk on it in the package formation. It also um, takes the message in and prioritizes it in and prioritizes it out. And it also sets the voltages. So what we're going to need to do is to go around and unplug modules on this car. And when we unplug the right module, this will pop up and then we'll start to have the communications back. And then we'll need to test the system to see where we're at. So let's go ahead and, and start. I mean, the seat modules obviously are the easiest thing to get to. So let's unplug the seat modules and then let's look at the scope to see what we've got. The first module that I want to unplug is the driver's seat con control module. We've already found it because that's where I'm plugged in, so let's go ahead and get this one first. Wow, that's it. The scope popped up. Can you believe that? The first module is the one that's bad. That never happens. Now that we've unplugged the correct module, we now have restored the CAN B, which is the medium speed. Now on the medium speed bus, I want you to look at this and you can see I have a high voltage being pulled low and a low voltage being pulled high. This is a differential voltage scheme. The reason that that's done is to limit the RF or the radio frequency out of the transmission. When I have one voltage going high and one going low, they with these opposed voltages that will limit the RF. That's the same way that CAN high does this. Uh, so CAN C is CAN high speed and it goes from 2.5 volts to 3.5 and it goes from 2.5 to 1.5. These voltages are opposing each other and they will cancel each other's radio frequency out. So let's go ahead and take a look at this signal a little bit closer now that we've got it back up. Let's shut these guys off we want to zoom in here and look at this this data frame so these are our data frames we can see that we're being pulled up and down let's take a look at this guy here here we can see that we have 5 volts being pulled to 1 volt and we've got uh, basically 0 volts being pulled to 4 volts you can see here that these are our packet transmissions of data if I turn that off, I can see the high line being pulled down, and here I can see the low line being pulled up, and when we put them together, that will limit the RF. So that's what the waveform is going to look like. This is fault tolerant, which means I can lose either high or low. I can have them shorted to ground or power. As long as only one line is affected, I should still have communications. However, on this system, these counseled out both because something's not quite right with the bottom or the low line, and the high line was gone. Now that we have this system up, we can see that we have uh, full communications restored back to the car. The shop is going to need to put in the driver's seat front control module and program it for the car and then this car will be ready to return to the customer. What I want you guys to realize is these communication problems as long as you take a logical uh, sequence of events and you're using a oscilloscope, they're really not that hard. Some of these can be, but most of them are pretty easy. If you do this, you'll have good troubleshooting in your race.